Hi, good afternoon. Um, welcome to the Open Saturday Information, Advice and Guidance session for students and parents interested in finding out more about the animal care and land management courses that we have at Petrock. So my name's Rita Sampson. I'm the Head of Faculty for Health and Care. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the session today. OK, I can see some questions there already. Uh, if you'd like to be a vet, um, I'll just quickly <laughs> deal with that question, um, because actually animal care course is not the right option for you if you want to be a vet. If you want to be a vet, you need to do A levels and you need to have some science or pretty much all science subjects. So uh, chemistry, biology, maths or physics is what you need to if you want to be a vet. Uh, veterinary nursing, animal care is absolutely fine for that, but not um, not to be a vet itself. You need to do A levels in science. Hope that answers your question. Uh, will I need any work experience to get a place on the course? We have always asked students in the past if they can get some evidence of work experience, just really for themselves to confirm that they sort of have a better idea of what it's like to work with animals as opposed to having a lot of pets um, and being interested in animals. So we do recommend to students that they do go and get a little bit of work experience if they can before they start the course and bring some evidence of that when they start college. But it's not mandatory. So you don't have to get any work experience before you come on to the course. Although we would really strongly suggest that you get just a week, maybe in the summer holidays or the Easter holidays and say to a local pet shop or um, if there's a stables nearby, you know, would you mind if I did a few days work experience just to really get that hands on aspect that you won't have had obviously so far. Obviously, at the moment with the COVID situation, that's a bit more tricky. Um, so we wouldn't certainly wouldn't expect that before next year. But if you know anyone that has um, stables or somewhere where you can do a little bit of work experience before next year, that would be really beneficial for you. And if you could get them to just do you a little letter saying, you know, Joe Bloggs has done a week's work experience with us this summer and did some animal handling or what, whatever it is and um, bring that to show us, that would be really, really good if you can do that, that it's certainly not essential, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the courses, about the different levels that we have at Petrock. We've pretty much got something for everyone in animal care if you are interested in it. And I'll tell you a bit about the GCSEs that you need to get onto the course because that's really important. And I'll tell you a little bit about how the course is structured and then see if there's any more questions that come from that. So in animal care, we have level one, level two and level three. Level one is the lowest level, of course, and level three is the highest. Level one and level two are one year courses. The level three is a two year course that does give you UCAS points and will enable you to progress onto university. You might want to do zoology. You might want to do an animal management degree. We run one of those at Petrock. You might want to do something to do with environmental science. Lots of our students are interested in that aspect of um, wildlife and so on. Um, and you might want to be able, you could go on and do a veterinary nursing degree as well if you've completed the two years of the animal care le level three course and achieved a high enough grade. So the higher, if you get lots of distinctions for units, you get more UCAS points. And the more UCAS points, that equivalence to, that's, is the equivalent to the grades that you get for A levels. So you, they carry UCAS points as well. Level one and two, you can progress on from each of those level courses onto the next level up. So if you start on level one, you can then progress on to level two if you pass the course and and um, pass all the, the aspects of it, all the units and do your work experience and so on. And then you can do level two. And if you start at level two, you can go on to level three in the next year while you're at college. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the GCSE grades because that's incredibly important. 
So depending what course level you do, that depends on your GCSE grade results when you come to us at Petroc. If you want to do level one, if you're starting at level one, you've probably got a GCSE grade profile with some level twos, maybe a three, but you will need at least four GCSEs with at least grade twos and preferably some threes. The reason for that is to be able to cope with the um, level of work and the written work and reading that you'll have to do on that course to be able to pass it. And there is a small exam on the level one for animal management as well. It's about an hour long, but you so you need to be able to cope with that level of work. At level two, to get onto the level two course, you'll need to have five GCSEs at a grade D or a grade three. So they're sort of equivalents, including English and maths and preferably science. If you haven't got science, we'll chat to you about that, but it will have an impact on progression and later employment opportunities and things. So it's important that we're really clear with you about um, whether if you haven't got science about what your options might be, because they might be much more limited. So four GCSEs with twos and above for level one. For level two, you need five GCSEs, including English and maths and preferably science at a grade three. You might have a mixture of fours and threes. The English and maths grades are the critical ones that will determine which level of course you go on to. Level three, you need to have at least five good GCSE passes, which means you must have a C or a grade four, preferably a five, but you must have that in English, maths and preferably science as well. Again, it does limit your options if you don't have science, if you want to work in the animal care and management field. If you want to go on and do something like zoology or um, animal management, you really will need to have uh, a science, a bit of a, quite a strong science background. The other reason for that, um, why we say science is quite important, is there are some units. There's an anatomy and physiology unit, a first aid unit. There's a, a unit about breeding, which includes some work on genetics and genetic inheritance. And so you really do need to be able to grasp those core science concepts to be able to pass those units with a good grade. So that's the GCSE uh, entry requirements for each level. When you're with us, you'll be doing a study programme. So if you don't have maths and English, that will be timetabled alongside your main qualification, along with some employability and work experience so that you get the, everything that you need to be able to progress on. OK. We do also have quite a few trips and visits for animal care. There is a small fee that's charged for the course to help cover the costs of transport and the minibuses that the staff drive to transport students to go on some of these trips and for coach hire. And it's about £70 and that then covers the transport costs uh, for the whole year. So they'll do things like go to Plymouth Aquarium. They usually go to the North Devon Show. This would obviously be in a typical year, not in a COVID year. Uh, they go to Monkey World in Dorset, they go to Coombe Martin Zoo, to Paynton Zoo, and they'll have talks and get some hands-on experiences in some of those trips as well. One of the really good things about animal care is that we also run an Erasmus trip. That's a European funded trip. It's completely free to students and up to 20 students can go at any one time. And it's going to Sweden and doing land management and some looking at species that are out there um, and working on some key skills that you need um, and doing a little bit of work experience around the centre where we stay. So that's a really brilliant experience for students. We normally take second year students who might be leaving us the subsequent year. So hopefully most students can get the opportunity to go if they want to. It is for two weeks. That's quite a long time, but it's a really great experience. And the students have absolutely loved it in previous years. Get really um, wet and muddy and um, sometimes it can snow even in May. But um, it's a really brilliant experience to go to Sweden and sort of experience a different culture and really do some different outdoor experiences. So some of the things, one of the things about animal care that's very different to 
um, a lot of the courses is you will have, you'll do some real practical duties. All of the courses have work experience in my faculty, but animal care has some practical duties on site in our animal centre. And if you've been on the Petrock website and looked on the Petrock PACE uh, information, you might have seen something about the animal centre. We've got a fabulous uh, facility for our students for them to do assessments in. You have to have practical assessments in handling the animals as well as your written assignments and your exams. And basically each group will go into the centre at least once a week and they will do a session with the assessor and you will learn all about the different species, the different categories of species. So there's exotic mammals, there are mammals, There's a, a, we've got an aquarium in there, we have different types of spiders, we have sugar gliders, we have some goats. Uh, we're about to do a trial with some chickens um, that are coming to stay with us for a little while to see how that's going. Uh, we have an exotics room with some bearded dragons. We've just got two new bearded dragons. They're both quite young um, and very friendly. We've got rabbits, guinea pigs. So we have a rodent room as well with dagoos. Uh, we have different types of rats. There's all sorts. So we've got tortoises as well. There's a whole range of species. Uh, we have an aviary with some birds in there. And the reason why we have all those different species is to enable students to get a real grasp of the differences between different types of animals and how to handle them. You'll do units on breeding and grooming, nursing, um, first aid, as I said earlier, uh, animal behaviour. That's one of the units on level three that's very popular, uh, understanding why animals might have a change in behaviour, what the cause of that might be. And you'll go into quite a lot of depth. So it gives you a really good ground. And if you want to go on to veterinary nursing, if you want to go on and do a zoology degree, if you want to go and do something in environmental sciences and land management, we have a degree at Petrock that's animal management. And that's obviously, um, you know, so you can do that straight from doing the level three. There's lots of options. In terms of career, uh, quite a lot of the students want to go on to be veterinary nurses or vet assistants. Some of them want to work for things like charities like the RSPCA. Um, they're interested in maybe doing things about dealing with the climate and environment, environmental changes and how that affects animals. One of the lecturers that we have on the teaching team who's just newly started with us um, has actually worked for DEFRA and has got quite a lot of experience in terms of like managing a national park in Malawi. So we have really experienced teaching team. They're really enthusiastic. You get hands on experience and you get the theory side of it as well. So I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the work experience, because that's quite an important aspect of this. Um, we help you to arrange work experience, but you do have to do some of that yourself as a student and, and contact the employer. We have a huge list of employers that we work with. Part of the unit on work experience, it's a, a double unit on the course, that involves you actually doing a little portfolio and reflective work on how you've done in your work experience and you need to do at least 100 hours so you can do that throughout the year you can do it in blocks um, that's a really vital part of the course just working with animals is very different to having them as a pet as I said at the, the beginning so that's quite important so the work experience is mandatory when you go to work experience obviously you need to be able to get there you need appropriate clothing um, you will have overalls and wellies that you will need to get to work in the animal centre. Um, when you have an interview, the staff will tell you more about that. We do have a, a company that can get the overalls for us with your name printed on it and so on. So they're usually about uh, £20, something like that. So in terms of the fees for the course, we've got the £70 to cover all the trips and travel that you need to do. And the overalls to work in the centre. There's some health and safety regulations about the type of clothing and the type of footwear that you can wear in the centre. So that's the fees. Um, so yeah, the duties is an integral part of the course and the work experience. 
you'll do uh, in terms of the assessment for the course, I'll tell you a little bit about something called the synoptic assessments, which are quite a large part of the animal care and management. So you'll do a range of different units and those units will be assessed holistically, which means instead of looking at some of them individually, you'll have a practical assessment where you'll do eight hours of supervised preparation and you'll prepare some notes and you, you'll do it, some tasks associated with that. The staff obviously supervise it and explain what you have to do. And then you will go into the centre and you'll be observed handling random species that you'll be allocated. And you might have to do something like develop a enrichment programme for them or address some problems with nutrition or design a feeding program for them so there's different things that you have to do and you have to do a minimum of two completely different types of species so you might have um, a rodent and you might have a small mammal and how those animals are categorized is decided by the awarding body by city and guilds so you will have to evidence that you can handle any given animal um, that's within the centre. So that's why you go to the centre and practice and have all the, the duties so that you get used to that. So the synoptic assessment really pulls together everything that you're learning throughout the year. And then you will have some written assignments specifically for some of those units and a written exam around March, April time. Um, so there's a lot of work. There's quite a lot of work, but it is for the students that are interested in that field as a career, it really does set them up. And most of the students do want to stay within animal care. The ones that join the faculty do want to progress on, go on to higher level courses, and they do want to work in that industry. So if that's the industry that you're interested in, it really does help you in terms of employment to get into that area. Okay. So I just wondered if there's any questions from anything that I've said so far. Or have I answered them all? Will, will I? <laughs> uh, will I have to handle a species I have a phobia of? So if you're thinking of spiders um, and things like that, um, uh, not, not necessarily, but I can't say you can pick and choose, if that makes sense. you ha If you're going to work, um, we wouldn't, if you had a real phobia of uh, mice, we would try not to we would sort of talk to city and guild to like not allocate you that for your assessment. Um, but we don't have a choice over which animals you get allocated when it comes to your synoptic assessment. City and guilds decide that they have a list of students that are with us and they pick the species for them. That's to stop us over preparing students and just focusing on the ones that you have got and not letting you bother to learn about any of the other ones. Um, but in terms of duties, if you're really, really scared of a particular species, we wouldn't make you handle it. What I would say is if you're going to do animal care, it's probably best not to have a real, a really bad phobia of any species and to try and get over it because that is part of the course. And if it's... Um, spiders and things like that in particular if you're doing escape estate skills outside you are going to come across creepy crawlies and you do need to be able to handle them if you can if it's things like um bearded dragons or the snakes and geckos the lizards and things that we have they are you would really need to be handling some of those species um because that's part of the course so the, we could talk to you about that, but we certainly wouldn't be making you pick up the uh, the big scary spiders. I'm quite scared of those, so I wouldn't want to make somebody uh, be absolutely terrified. But we would try and get you to sort of, um, if we could manage that within the course. Okay. Yes, we've got lots of visits. So I did say a couple earlier, didn't I, about the zoo. So Paint and Zoo, obviously, this, we're very, very lucky in the southwest here. There are a number of places that the students can go to relatively easily. So they nearly 
every year we have kind of the same routine of trips because they fit in with the units and those settings they used to have in our students. So they always go to Painton Zoo, always go to Exmoor Zoo, always go to Monkey World, Plymouth Aquarium. Um, but Painton Zoo is really the, the big one in terms of zoos uh, in the local area. OK. OK, Jacob, uh, no, it won't affect your chances of getting on the course. Obviously, this year, uh, our students that were with us that had mandatory work experience couldn't complete it because we locked down in March and they might have had planned three days work experience as part of their work experience at Easter. So it won't affect your chances of getting on the course. Um, it, sometimes it's very difficult for students to get work experience beforehand. So really, please don't worry about that. Um, the main thing is that you've got a really keen interest and that you've got the right grades for the level that you want to go on to. OK. OK, so in terms of careers, um, students that study with us, some of them go on and do the animal management degree at Petroc. They do that. It's, it's um, a three year degree in conjunction with Plymouth University. We have a small number that go on to that. I would say that out of you usually have around 20, between 20 and 30, depending on the year of second year level threes that are completing their studies with us. Um, quite a few of those, I'd say at least 10 go on to do veterinary nursing. Some will just go and work in a vets and just or work in an animal environment just to get some experience. Some will go on, a couple usually go on and do zoology. A couple usually go on and do environmental sciences. So um, vet nursing is probably the most popular career aspiration for the students that we have. Um, but there are lots of jobs. The second most popular is probably being an RSPCA officer. Um, there's usually at least three or four students every year that are keen to work with animal charities. Um, and there are quite a few more of those than you would think. So that's the sort of job that students with certainly a level three qualification might go into. Level two, they might go on and work, support it. There's lots of um, organisations that have animals that need someone that knows quite a lot about them to help manage. Um, somebody that works for us as a technician uh, did the course with us and then went to work at the big sheep working with their animals there. So farm parks, dip, all sorts of things, um, working with um, stables, depending what their interests are. A couple of the students are always interested in equine therapy. Um, so yeah, it's quite a range really, okay? <laughs> um, unfortunately <laughs> not. So one of the things that's really important about the animal care courses is to recognise that although our students are really, really keen, I'd say that 99.9% .9 of them are mad keen about any animal. It doesn't matter what it is. They just love animals and they really want to work with animals. Working with animals it's very different to having even a lot of pets, you know, getting up early. Our students, when they work in the animal centre, we expect them to muck out the goats. Um, we expect them to do things like cleaning, the washing the food bowls, things like that, because that's what you would do if you were working, even in a zoo. What, it doesn't matter what level you're, you're working at. You would have to be doing the daily tasks of looking after the animals and doing health checks and all that sort of thing. Um, so you can't bring your own pet into college because you'll be in lessons or you'll be in duties and um, it just wouldn't be appropriate. We have to have um, particular species. Uh, so and we have everything that you need to get the right experience and to pass the course in our animal centre. It's really a fantastic resource. Um, it's got lots of different species, everything that we need for the students. OK. Yes, of course, you can still do animal care if you don't have your GCSE maths and English qualifications. So you can do, depending on the grades that you do achieve at school or what you've achieved already, if you're not a first year student with us, we would look at your GCSE profile and you could do either level one or level two. The minimum 
grades that you would need really are twos and threes um, for in particular for maths and English. So if you're looking at a mixture of twos and threes, you're probably looking at level one. And if you've got a mixture of threes and fours, you're probably looking at level two animal care. OK. OK, in terms of becoming a dog groomer, the animal care course is not appropriate. You need to do dog grooming itself. And we do run that, but it is only for adults who are 19 plus in age. So if you're under 19, and that includes all our full time students that are coming from school, you can't do the dog grooming course. You have to be over 19. It's a part time course. Um, and there's very, very limited spaces on it due to the amount of facilities that are needed to teach that. You have to do a dog grooming qualification. OK, that's a good question, Jacob. How many people are normally on the level three course? Um, this year we've had quite big groups. We've got about it does vary um, from year to year. It's hard to hard to predict exactly right, but approximately. 20 to 25 is the average number, although this year we have got 30. It's a really popular, popular course. So we have got quite large groups this year. None of our courses are part time. OK, they're only full time options apart from the dog grooming, as I said, and that's for 19 plus only. OK. Any more questions? If you do have any questions after the session is finished, what you can do is contact the advice and guidance team. I should think you can probably see the number and email address up on the screen there. You can contact them by email or you can ring them and someone will be in touch to answer your query if there's anything. There is information on the website. If there's anything that I haven't covered for you, you will be able to get some information from the guidance centre team. If they can't answer the question, they will pass it on to one of the curriculum and we will get back to you and have a chat with you. So if you want to make an application, you can do that. The courses are open on the website. Don't worry too much if you're not sure what level you should apply for. If you have your interview, we'll make sure you're on the right level. And if you don't get the, the right GCSE grades or you get better grades than you expected, we can we will offer you a place on a higher or lower level course. So please don't worry about that. We'll always offer you a space if you've been offered a place, even if you don't get your GCSE grades for level three, you can do level two and vice versa. OK, so please don't worry about that. Just have a quick look, see if there's anything else that I've forgotten to tell you about that might be really important. Uh, careers, work experience, the different levels. Um, duties. Yeah, I hopefully we'll have a lot of students that are interested in it and that there's some of you out there that this has been useful for today um, and you're keen to apply now as a result of finding out a little bit more. Thank you very much for attending the session today as well and hope everyone has a fabulous weekend.